toward your praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a covenant keeping God. Every time you engage with the terms of the covenant on any subject, you have committed its integrity to perform. The Bible is a book of covenants. The word testament and covenant means the same thing. And there is no provision here without conditions attached. As free as salvation is, that is what you must do to be saved. You don't do what you must do, you cannot be saved. There is no provision in this covenant book without conditions to meet. Open my eyes, Lord, tonight, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Would you lift up your two hands and pray? Covenant keeping God, we are here at your feet. Open the eyes of everyone today. Let this be an eye opening night for every participant here at Shiloh. Thank you, Father. In Jesus. Precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Your feelings and my feelings are irrelevant. They can't tamper with the authenticity of the, of the world. The truth is the truth forever. Beware lest mockers turn you off your destiny. There is nothing genuine that has no counterfeit. The existence of counterfeit is a proof of the existence of the reality. You can't design a naira currency of your own. You can only counterfeit the original. You can't design a fake dollar note of your own. You can only counterfeit, put something that looks like Many, many will be breaking limits. In the world of wealth, in the body of Christ, in these last days. The church shall become the fountain of the kind of wealth that eyes have not seen, no ears have. The church does not mean a denomination or a building. The church is the body of Christ. It means every member of the body by God's grand design for the end times we begin to command strange order of wealth. Amen. The kind never known in history. Amen. And you are there. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. That this truth is being abused does not mean it's not the truth. There are churches today, they call Church of Satan. Yes. People go there. Now, do you now stop going to church because there's a church of Satan? Yes.
I'm speaking to you as a God ordained apostle of end time wealth. This thing is more real than anybody can think. You don't need to make a noise about it. The sun doesn't make a noise. But can you deny its effect? The moon has never made a noise. Have you ever heard? I'm the moon. Have you heard that before? Does the star make a noise in your village? That we are the stars of this village. And you get to me Christmas and you hear the stars shouting from heaven. We are the stars of this place. You will run back. <laughs> it's a noiseless covenant. Noiseless. No, it is the effect that announces its presence. It's noiseless. Noiseless. Yes, yes, yes. Noiseless. If you promise me you won't sleep, you can sit down. <laughs> lift up your right hand, everybody. Come on, lift up your right hand. Lord, open my eyes tonight. Open my eyes tonight. <laughs> when once it's open, your heaven remains open. Open my eyes tonight to behold the wonders of your covenant in creating the future I desire. I must be part of this end, end time move of God. So help me, Jesus. Give the Lord the biggest clap of me. Please, you may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll be sharing with you tonight. On the mystery of your access to a world of no limits in this area of global struggle called prosperity. Now, it will be growing. Please come down on the volume, please. Come down on the volume. This will be growing worse and wars for the world but it will be happening in such dimensions in the body of Christ like never known in the history of man so I'm speaking to you tonight on unveiling the power of the altar of sacrifice unveiling the power of the altar of sacrifice unveiling the power of the altar of sacrifice apostles of Christ are ordained custodians of kingdom mysteries every authentic apostle of Christ is a custodian of kingdom mysteries with all sense of humility from my apostolic office many things have been birthed into the body of Christ which effect cannot be denied To the glory of God. He made known to me by revelation the mystery of the anointing oil. There are things spoken that have never been spoken in history on that subject. Validated by testimonies. If I do not the work of my father, believe me not. Anything God confirms is his word. Yes, they were there before, but opened up to another level. 
From Matthew 3, 11 and 12, I showed you the Holy Ghost with fire in one hand and fan in the other. That when you take a shot of the oil, it goes forth with his, his fan and fire mystery and flush out every nonsense from your system. And you know how many nonsense have been flushed out. When we started giving communion in Kaduna, all hell broke loose. They drink blood in that church. You go there, if you drink that thing, you won't go from the place forever. It was straight to them. There is no church of Christ today in Nigeria where they don't take communion. But I want to tell you something. God delivered to me the mercy of kingdom prosperity. Most of you are smiling today. You are partakers of that. You didn't know it before. You are partakers of that. Your cheeks have come out. Your life has been decorated. Those who have beers, their beers are growing longer. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So, apostles are custodians of kingdom mysteries. Now, watch. I'll read two verses of scriptures. The book of Psalms, chapter 5, and verse, chapter 50, and verse 5 and 6. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness. For God is judge himself. I will declare my righteousness over their altar of sacrifice. I will commit my integrity to see the altar of sacrifice produce after my commandment. What is on the altar of sacrifice? Psalm 126 and verse 1 to 6. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. And then they began to say among the heathen, The Lord has done great things for them. We were together before. Before, before. Come and see, oh. God has done great things for them, oh. Amen. Verse 3. The Lord has done great things for us. We are all, we are glad. You see, when God does something, you don't hide it. You don't hide it. <laughs> I mean, God has blessed me. You can't do anything about it. I mean, uh, you may be angry. It doesn't change it. Uh, he hasn't blessed me. Or, he hasn't blessed me. In, I've not reached anywhere there. Who. I'm going somewhere, I tell you. I heard that nations we need my help. I heard it in 1981. It's no guesswork. He said, for the law, I, the law, your God, bless us as, as, as I've said to you. And thou shalt lend unto nations, many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. <laughs> well, I'll be sharing with you some things. Not the church, oh, thou, thou, is not the church, thou shall lend to many nations. Now, hear me. It is not prosperity being able to feed your family, send your children to school, ride a car, build a house. But when you are willing to distribute because of the abundance in your stock, because of the abundance you are endowed with, That's where prosperity begins. In the name of Jesus, an end has come to your captivity. 
Then he went on in verse 4. Psalm 126. Turn again. Again our captivity, O God, as the streams of the south. They that sow in tears. Shall reap in joy. We knew how we got there. We can make it happen again. Sacrifice took us out of the company of the poor. Brought us to the realm of prosperity. We can make it happen again. It's not a once and for all experience. It's a once and again experience. Once and again, once and again, once and again, once and again. I go with every opportunity to be taken advantage of. My God shall supply all your needs. Now, are all your needs financial? All means all, less nothing. Whatever may be required around your life that is lacking to you, the altar on a once again basis. Once and again basis. Not once and for all. I have lived in that realm for years. Once and again, jumping at every opportunity as they present themselves. At the minister's summit, annually we take offering at the end of it. And we take these offerings to service the needs of humanity, like orphanages and motherless people's home and all that stuff. So we were there again today. One dime has never been left behind to do something else. In fact, I said to my people, I said, I felt like canceling the offering to let you go and service the needs in the area where you live. Our small church has a percentage that goes into servicing the welfare of humanity every month from every assembly. I don't know if any organization, not just church, who has committed itself to help him solve the problems of displaced people by wicked people. They have never given a dime. No! No. Except to suck blood. Except to sponsor killings. Except for people to say, accept responsibility for killing people and they are still on the street. Now they are looking for hate speech. They are not looking for hate acts. <laughs> Which one is worse? Hate speech or hate acts? They will see somebody and cut his head. Then you are free. Then say somebody you are stupid. Then you will die. Can you imagine that? It's a stone age mentality. But I think they are free from it now. <laughs> It's, there's nothing wrong in trying to make attempt. You think we are all dummies? <laughs> what education do you have? Where did you get it from? That you bamboozle everybody? You are not doing well. You are not doing well. Yeah. Yeah. They must tell you you are not doing well. Yes, yes. What's your problem? <laughs> now, hear me. Please, hear me. And answer me. Is this government doing well? No. What's your problem? Hallelujah. 
Have you ever seen the church carry gun looking after people to kill? No. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. They that sow in tears shall reap with joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, but bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. Doubtless, doubtless. That means the harvest is guaranteed. You are not going to pray for it. You are not going to cry for it. But a sacrifice, a sacrifice, it's not in volume, it's in cost. Somebody's one naira is a greater sacrifice than somebody's one thousand. Because that one naira is all is living. Somebody's one thousand is still has some money for peanuts, some money for drinks. This man has nothing. He drops his shoe and trekked home. Why won't have him here? That is the mystery of the altar of sacrifice. It's what to jump at. It's what to look out for. It's what to be sensitive to when God is saying, Rear me an altar of sacrifice. God has respect for the altar of sacrifice. The end time is ordained a rainy church. But listen. The rich will always rule over the poor. So if the end time church must reign, the end time church must come out of the dungeon of lack, want, and penury into the realm of supernatural abundance. Proverbs 22 verse 7, the rich rule it over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. What I tell you in secret, shout on the house top. And the Bible says, The voice of a poor man is not heard. So God must enrich his church to keep shouting his word on the house top. Yes, yes, yes. Now, my kingdom through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. And this gospel of the kingdom must be preached among all nations, and then shall the end come. So God has ordained to empower the end time church for wealth, so as to accomplish his agenda for the end time. So you haven't seen wealth at all. Wealth is coming down to the church. God's people will be flowing in strange financial fortune. Yes. In line with God's end time agenda for his church. Can I hear you loudest, amen? amen? So, those are covenant platforms that should steer up your engagement with the terms of the covenant. That God is coming down to enrich his church in dimensions that eyes have not seen, nor ears have. Amen. amen. And as a member of his own household, you are his instrument for actualizing that. Amen. Not that he needs what you have, but he's looking for channels through which to release his resources. Please know that our God has no needs. He's only committed to meeting your needs by showing you what you must do. To be part of his channels of blessings in this end time. That 
pastor was told yesterday, the bigger your kingdom dream, the larger your prosperity cost. The bigger your kingdom dream, the larger your prosperity cost. Because the summary of it is he wants to empower his church for wealth to accomplish his end time agenda. You don't know that purpose. You are not a candidate. You don't plug into that purpose from where you are. From where you are. The covenant journey begins from where you are. It's not where you are going. Lord, when I have 1,000, you see me and say, no, let me see 100 naira first. I want to see you with your 100 naira commitment to my kingdom. Lord, when I get 100,000, you will know that there's nobody like me in this church. Now, now that you're 100, show it. Show it. Show it. Show it. He said, from the place where thou art, start from here you are. God does not believe in your talk, talk about what we do tomorrow. Show me what we do today. What we do today will show me what we do tomorrow. What we do today will show me what we do tomorrow. Amen. Without a heart for the kingdom, you are not a candidate for this exponential wealth that God is bringing to his body. But I see everybody here plugging into it today. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. In Haggai chapter 1, and from verse 3, down the line, then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying, Is it time for ye to dwell in your seed houses and this house lie in waste? Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have so much, but you bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm, and it are honest wages, honest wages to a, and put it into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and bring the house. And I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, said the Lord. He said, You look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it in, I did blow upon it. Why, said the Lord? Because of my house that lieth in waste, and he run every man to his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from view. So it's not only not tightening that closes heaven, not minding. The advancement of the kingdom can close anybody's heaven. Can close anybody's heaven. Amen. Now go on, please. Therefore the heavens over you, and I call for a drought. I, God, called for dry season. I call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the Corn and upon the oil, upon the new wine, and upon everything that the Lamb bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the house who walk and walk, and nothing is happening. So, he said, Consider your ways. Go to the mountain, bring wood. I will take pleasure in it, and I'll be glorified, said the Lord. God's purpose for end time wealth is primarily for the advancement of the kingdom. You may not like it, it doesn't change it. You may react and say, no, I'm going home now. Go quickly. <laughs> that is the purpose. So if your purpose is to accumulate wealth, you are not a candidate. You are not a candidate. If your purpose is to accumulate wealth, you are not a candidate. You are not a candidate. But if your purpose is to, if your dream is to advance his kingdom, you are the channel he's looking for. Amen. You are the channel he's looking for. Amen. I told God sometime, I said, Jesus, engrace me to build you 1,000 churches before I come to heaven. Amen. We dedicated five already this year. We do it every year by the grace of God. Ah. I'm 
prosperously relaxed. No announcement. No pressure. Never called any of my sons in the gospel once in my life. Any of my mentors, can you help? If you don't do what we do, you won't see what we see. For instance, we have these widespread churches in rural areas. You have capacity, but you don't. Yes, our church is there. In fact, I asked them to use my sitting room. <laughs> Collect your sitting room back. You don't need sitting room. <laughs> and you have the means until you are hit with one sickness and then you finish all the money. Wow. You won't suffer waste. <laughs> Let me tell you this. There is no day commitment to kingdom advancement will not lead to financial explosion. Yeah. There is no day. This book is certain on it. There is no day. His word, the truth of scriptures, lives and endures forever. 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 I pray that each one will catch a kingdom dream into the year 2020. Yeah. And may you never come out of it till your time on earth is over. In our culture, when a man dies and uh, he doesn't know where he came from, it's more like a curse. It's time to think of giving back to the kingdom that made us. It's time to start giving back to it. There are many church builders in this church. They keep building. They finish one, they finish another one. <laughs> one of my sons, as we started church in their rural place, immediately went in, built the church building, the pastor's building, the children's place, built the gatehouse, bought a bus to collect other people from other hamlets to come to church. I've watched him over the years. God never lies. In the name of Jesus, your heart for God and his kingdom will keep enlarging for life. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Very quickly, what does the altar of sacrifice offer. Are you ready? The first altar of sacrifice we saw in scriptures was in Genesis chapter 8 and verse 20. And Noah reared, builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings unto the Lord. Now, what that means is this. Everything that went to the ark went in pairs. So if you take the male, it remains only the female. So that is the end of that generation. If you take the female, it will only remain the male. That becomes it. That's what makes it a sacrifice. That's what makes it a sacrifice. What will happen later, I don't care. You say, how did they get a pair? Ask God. He said, the heavens will declare his righteousness. Whatever is missing will be supplied for. For God is the judge of all. <laughs> Amen. And what did God say? God smelled his good somewhere in heaven and said, I will no longer curse the earth for man's sake. So sacrifice is a curse breaker. The altar of sacrifice breaks causes. Causes don't have medical cure. 
You can't go to one big hospital and say, I'm here for cure. They say for what? Of what? From causes. Ah, we don't cure causes here. <laughs> go to Papa. <laughs> we don't. Cure. There are many people carrying generational causes that they don't have, they don't know anything about. They just were born into it. And it keeps plaguing them and plaguing them and plaguing them. The altar of sacrifice is one of the provisions of heaven to break those causes and set you free. So the curse on the earth was broken at the instance of the sacrifice of Noah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Most of us are doing today what nobody in Nigeria should ever did. Because we came out of the curse. We came out of the cause of mediocrity, the cause of stagnation, the cause of frustration. We came out of it. And most of us came out of it from the altar of sacrifice. What does the altar of sacrifice offer? Number two. The altar of sacrifice entitles you to a sworn blessing. Sworn. Sworn blessing. Genesis 22, Abraham reared an altar of sacrifice with Isaac his son. You, heard this, you know this story. And then God said, called on him a second time. <laughs> Abraham. He said, you know, I? You have done this thing by myself, have I sworn, said God, that in blessing I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and thy seed shall possess the gates of the enemy. And in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Every genuine altar of sacrifice secures a sworn blessing. A sworn blessing. When we were starting our church planting ministry in 1987, I said, Jesus, why are people not giving to us this? He said, give me that thing. And joy came alive in me. I told my wife, God just said, give me that thing. She said, praise the Lord. <laughs> On my way home, listen to me. God spoke to me. And I told all of you. I said, God said, my son David, even if you don't want to be rich, it's too late. Direct, raw. You have heard it how many times in your life? You have heard it how many times in your life? Swarm blessing awaits you from the altar of sacrifice. Don't be casual about it. What is the wicked thing that you wanted? It went up. My generation will not play for that thing forever. No, there is nothing in it. It's a platform to change your story. So when God speaks to you, it's an opportunity. It is not a burden. It's okay. <laughs> when we came into ministry, not now. Giving offering was a taboo. It means it's not known. It's not taught. Not that uh, somebody give you offering for what? They ask you, did you bring anything for the brethren? <laughs> which, which offering? Amen. <laughs> When you are going to put something in your pocket in case somebody is crying and need their help if you have the thing yourself. Things are changing. Please understand the mystery of the altar of sacrifice in experiencing supernatural turnaround in your life. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm carrying a swarm blessing. So your argument is immaterial, it's late. 
He said, swore by myself. I swore my son David. Even if you don't want to be rich, it's too late. So when they're complaining about you, keep rejoicing. You are under my sworn blessing. You didn't steal anybody anything. No. So what's their problem? Many will come under that sworn blessing at Shiloh 2019. <laughs> and you won't come off from under that sworn blessing all the days of your life. Now, number four, what is on the altar of sacrifice? Number three, is it three? Okay, so write number three. <laughs> Amen. Now, number three to number last is inside me. So <laughs> I'm not going anywhere to look for it. <laughs> Amen. Some Sundays ago, I forgot my note here on this table. And I was already on the platform, so there's no point coming back here and be checking what it is. I didn't steal it. I cooked it. I downloaded everything on that note, on that altar. It's in my heart, it's not in my head. So it can't be lost. Now, watch that scripture again. Thy seed, thy seed, thy seed. Speaking to his posterity, his children's children after him, thy seed, thy seed, thy seed. They shall be, thy seed shall, in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Abraham secured his posterity from the altar of sacrifice. Can you deny the impact of the Jews on the earth today? In every facet of life. There is no field of studies where the Jews do not have Nobel laureates. There is no field. Technology, don't mess up with them. Secured by their great, 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 great forefathers from the altar of sacrifice. So I have zero fear about the tomorrow of our children's children. I have zero concern. Not fear now, concern. Zero concern. Zero. When I'm going to heaven, I will go smiling. I have zero concern about this church. There is no abracadabra. Here is the truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. Amen. He secured his posterity on the altar of sacrifice. Amen. So it's not just bread and butter that you are eating. Glory to God. The curses are broken. So an altar of sacrifice secures posterity. Say with me, the altar of sacrifice secures posterity. None of your children will wander from the Lord. No one will run after them to know God. None of your children will become dank to them. None of children will become a concern in the community. Amen. Now, wait a minute. Your children will be far, far greater than you are. Amen. Their children will be far greater than they will be. Amen. And their children's children will be far, far greater than wherever they stop. Amen. Your lineage shall be called a blessed lineage. Amen. Today I sit and, I, and take note when my son is teaching. I take note in my lifetime. I'm taking note. I'm not writing to impress anybody. I'm just saying some light. Now he taught me how to multiply the effect of our outreaches. That when I ask them to come, I ask them to come with their friend. I say, hey, okay, thank you. So I took it on. Hello, 
know when you are coming on Sunday, make sure you come with your families, family members and friends. He taught me. In my lifetime. I'm walking into that realm in my life because it's the truth. Look at all these mysteries. If I'm not walking against it like that, can I be hungry? No, I can't be. My prayer is that you will embrace every truth of scriptures for your sweatless trial. Amen. Not that they call sacrifice and you give the offering you give on Sunday. They said, What is it? That's my sacrifice. God said, Carry your thing from me. I don't need that nonsense. Amen. Amen. How many want to see their posterity secured? Yes. Yes. Your children's children secured. Yes. That is it. Now, let me tell you this. Somebody has a wayward son. From this altar of sacrifice, God will declare his righteousness to bring him back home. Amen. What does the altar of sacrifice offer? Now number four. A plague hit Israel. And a prophet of the Lord came to David. This plague will destroy the whole land. But go real not of sacrifice. At the trash and floor of Onam. And he went. The man said, look, take it, take it for free. He said, no, I will never offer a sacrifice unto the Lord of that which cost me nothing. So it is the cost that defines sacrifice. It's not the volume. It's the cost. It's the cost. Somebody's 1,000 is heavyweight sacrifice in the sight of God by reason of where he is now. Somebody's 10,000 is no sacrifice. He said, take that to your governor. Will you take it from your hand? He said, beggar that has no choice. God is not a beggar. Yes. In Malachi chapter 1, number 6, the Bible says, a son honoreth his father and his servant fear that his master. If I be your master, where's my fear? And I feel, uh, your master, where, where's my fear? If I be my father, your father, where's my honor? If I be your master, where's my fear? You have the fattest calf among your heart. And you have brought to me the blind and the lame. The one that's about to die. <laughs> he said, take that you're going to receive from your hand. Get your stuff off my sight. That's the many. It's rejected. That's the many. Don't toy with God. Don't toy with God. Don't toy with God. Don't toy with God. Honor the Lord with thy substance, not thy leftover. Nothing honors God like your substance. Your substance, not your leftover. Not your chain from newspaper vendor. Your substance. Your substance. And you know what they say will happen? Then shall thy bounds be filled with plenty. And thy presses shall burst out with new wine. It takes your substance. We are told in the morning, they open their treasures, not their trashes. They open their treasures in worship of Jesus. They open their treasures. As God has blessed every man, so he raised us according to his blessing. So let him give. As God has blessed everyone. So it's not just everybody give. As according to the blessing of the Lord God, the Lord God is God upon his life. You give as God has blessed you. You give as you purpose in your heart. Now, you give relaxed. God is not a need. It's the same whether you give or not. He said, I am that I am. I'm not going to give, I am. I'm going to give, I am. I will withdraw my giving, I am. 
is the same. So that you can't boast to God. There is nothing you are giving that is not what, from what he gave you. So what is the bragging about? No. So don't be stressed. I hate people being stressed. I'm teaching you what we need for life. Not just for a minute. For life. You will need this for life. I have lived with this all my life. I'm blessed though. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm not afraid to say it. I want people who will be angry to be angry. Those who will be happy to be happy. I'll be saying it forever. I'm blessed. blessed. Dangerously blessed. Yes. Amen. Neatly blessed. Neatly blessed. No corner corner in my blessing. It's the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and ask no sorrow. No sorrow around me. You can't see lack of joy in my life for any reason. No matter what's happening around you need the blessing of the Lord. Come and taste it. Let an altar of sacrifice be a delight to you. It's not about God is in need. Come, let's help. Otherwise, you are going to go down. No! Go down, go down if you want to go down. You see, your walk with God is it. There are many pastors here, I said it in our conference, that the income of your church will soon be far less than your personal income. As you maintain your commitment to your task, it's the way it happens anywhere from generation to generation. So, uh, just leave God's money to be God's money and be satisfied with your own. Yeah. Amen. Coats don't wear out of time, it has another one inside. <laughs> so, when the inner coat wears out, the outer one will see me there. So, you don't have any problem. Somebody's story is changing. Say with me, the altar of sacrifice is for my benefit. God is not benefiting from it at all. It's not the one that's making the church to work. It's only making my life to work. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. From the altar of sacrifice, or the altar of sacrifice, offers divine protection. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The book of Psalms, chapter 20 and verse 3. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from his sanctuary. And send thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy bond sacrifices. Now, what does that mean? Is that in the day of trouble, God declares his righteousness over you. I owe you protection, I owe you defense, and I'm here to prove it. I owe you protection and I owe you defense and I'm here to prove it. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee against the assaults of the wicked. Level them on your behalf without your knowledge. Send thee help out of the sanctuary as he remembers your offerings. And your born sacrifices. So you secure protection from the altar of sacrifice. You secure protection. Your going out is preserved. Your coming in is preserved. A thousand may fall at their side and ten thousand by their right hand. With your eyes only, you will see them. Those evils will not come near you. Come and give the Lord a big hand of prayer. That is one of the things that the altar of sacrifice offers. And in the name of Jesus Christ, an end has come to uncertainties in your life. Yeah. Also, we saw the altar of sacrifice offers supernatural fruitfulness. Supernatural fruitfulness. It was via hospitality that the word of the Lord located Sarah. Come on now. 
let's make some flour, let's do some, but took a lamb, slew the lamb, dressed the lamb, and give to these visitors that don't know who they were. By so doing, some entertained angels unaware. And then, where is Sarah thy wife? And she came out of the tent. According to the, life, the time of life, you shall embrace a son. <laughs> Thank you, sir. He got to a room. <laughs> he said, Why did Sarah laugh? Sarah said, God forbid, I didn't laugh. <laughs> she ran into fruitfulness from the altar of sacrifice. Now, this will also inform us very well the case of the Shunammite woman. They built a place for the prophet of God. And whatever time is passing here, he could have where to refresh. Call the Shunammite. What would you want that we do for you? That's the altar of sacrifice. It speaks. It speaks. It speaks. The altar of sacrifice speaks. Heaven declares righteousness when you rear an altar of sacrifice. He said, he has no child. According to the time of life, you shall embrace his son. And the son came. The devil went and killed his son. Elisha came back and raised his son. Praise God. <laughs> you can't stop the covenant from working. Yes, yes. Now, wait a minute. In the name of the Lord Jesus, for everyone called barren, this altar of sacrifice at Shiloh 2019 marks the end of that ordeal. Amen. There are people here you never sight arm robbers again in your life. Amen. There are people here you never experience any form of accident auto in the air on the sea again. Because the Lord will become your defense. And as you maintain this sacrifice, every time they make an announcement in church for any project, just be part of it. Be part of it. You may begin today with 1,000, tomorrow is 2,000, next tomorrow is 10,000, next tomorrow is 100,000, another tomorrow is 1 million, next tomorrow is 1, 2 million, another time is 10 million. You just keep changing levels from the altar of sacrifice. How many will say a loud amen to that? One more time, give the Lord Jesus a big hand of praise. I say, Amen. Now, that means your next altar of sacrifice will bring an end to every form of plague in your life. Every form of generational diabolical curse ravaging anyone's life under the sound of my voice from the altar of sacrifice we raise real less unto God it will mark the end of that cause in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ listen to this it will bless you Among the offers of the altar of sacrifice is access to divine secrets, access to divine ideas. <laughs> Every empire on earth is built on ideas. Every empire on earth is built on idea. And divine ideas are superior any day to every other form of idea. Hallelujah. Abraham, a man given to sacrifice, created the first cattle, cattle ranch in history. And he became very rich. He wasn't going about disturbing everybody in the environment. He built a ranch. You know where to go where you need a cattle. They became fatter than all the other cattle around. You don't wander around to locate them. You know where his cattle ranch is. He became very rich. He took monopoly of the cattle market. He commanded the children to walk after his own ways. And so Isaac invented the first irrigation farm in Bible history. And became the breadwinner of the whole Philistines. 
He went forward, he was strong, became very great until the Philistines envied him. And they said to him, you are mightier than us. Get out from our place. And after he left, they came back to him, please, please, make a treaty with us. You will destroy us. And if you want to destroy us, so one day you can destroy us. Make a treaty with us that you will not harm us. That you will not help our enemies to defeat us. Amen. A man became stronger than a nation. Please note that the altar of sacrifice is absolutely for your benefit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely for your benefit. Take advantage of it. I heard from the Lord that an army of giants will rise from Shiloh 2019. Yeah. And I prayed in the morning, my father, let this be the mountain, the bad place. Let this mountain be the bad place of giants after the order of Abraham. He said, I have heard you. Now, if you are Abraham's seed, what do you do? You do the works of Abraham. You are Abraham's children, you do the works of Abraham. You do the works of Abraham. In the name of Jesus, I decree the rise of financial giant. The kind the world has never seen before. You are one of them. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Shout it with confidence. Shout it with confidence. And shout it with confidence. Divine ideas will put you on top of your world. It was by divine secret that Job became the greatest businessman of his days. All that was trading Harvard principles of business, Job was trading divine secrets. And he became greater than them all. I decree your access to divine secrets via the altar of sacrifice in the name of Jesus Christ. You know what sacrifice does is to open the heavens. And then um, when the windows of heaven are open, there was an outpour of rain, which implies the Holy Spirit. And what it does is to quicken your understanding, to be able to see what others can see in your area of endeavor, and thereby putting you on top of them. Now, in the name of Jesus, the next altar of sacrifice you are going to rear, it will open your heavens. And release divine ideas upon your life <laughs> and change your story forever. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. By divine idea, Jacob prevailed over Laban. He raised cattle creatively after the color of his choice. And he just spoiled the empire of labor. He just spoiled. I'm in chapter 30 of uh, Genesis, and you start from verse 31 all the way to verse 43. You saw divine ideas repositioning Jacob forever above labor and turning a nation out of him subsequently. The good news is it. You never lack inspired ideas again. <laughs> That's how powerful divine ideas can be. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The battle is over. The battle is over. The battle is over. Now let's conclude.
The wealthiest man in Bible history was a product of the altar of sacrifice. And his name, Solomon. The, why? the wealthiest man in Bible history was a product of the altar of sacrifice. I've also given you that which you have not asked. You don't have to ask anything. <laughs> Both riches and honor. So that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if you read chapter 4, you see the enormity of Solomon's wealth from the altar of sacrifice. And then out of the altar of sacrifice came the wisest man in Bible history. His name again, Solomon. Verse 29 of chapter 4. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sun has by the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of, of all the children of the east country. And all the wisdom of Egypt. Now, he was wiser than all men. That also came from the altar of sacrifice. Greater than Solomon's will rise from this prophetic event. They will not rise and fall, they will rise till the end of life. That tells you what is in the altar of sacrifice. Get excited about it every time you have an opportunity. Jump at it. Every time God inspires you to rear an altar of sacrifice, jump at it. Finally, finally, it offers divine health. The altar of sacrifice offers what? divine health. And we saw that in all the covenant fathers. They enjoy health and longevity. is part of the outcomes of sacrifice. We are seeds of Abraham. Abraham enjoyed health and enjoy longevity is all part of the package now blessed is the man that considered the poor the Lord will deliver him in the day of trouble the Lord will strengthen he will keep um, he, the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive and he shall be blessed upon the earth and thou shalt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies and now verse 3, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of Laguish. He said, thou will make all his bed in his sickness. That just simply means get up, go to work. Get off my friend. Go to work. Sacrifice, among other things, offers you health, vitality, and longevity. Money can't buy that. My prayer is that today marks the end of any form of a deal on your health. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord the biggest clap of it. Now, John D. Rockefeller was told by his doctors that he would not see his 52nd per day. So he parted with 50% of all his stakes in business to service the needs of humanity. And God said, what? 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 He lived to be 93 before he passed. Sacrifice can prolong your days. Any day, any time, anywhere. It was between him and God there was no press conference. No. No. The 
There is no aspect of scriptures that does not offer specific profit. All scriptures give my description of God and is profitable. Profitable. The altar of salvation is one of the most profitable platforms in the kingdom that changes people's stories. So expect your supernatural turnaround today. Amen. That age long curse shall be broken off your life. Amen. That plague, that hereditary disease that has been passing from one generation to another, this altar of sacrifice will bring an end to it. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. The impact of this sacrifice will place you on that platform for life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will hear good news. You will hear good news. You will hear good news. The cause of joblessness shall be broken. The cause of marital frustration shall be broken. Yeah. You'll find some families, they hardly keep the family. They hardly keep homes. They hardly keep their homes. Husband, male and female, go out today. Come back tomorrow. You run away. You come back. You say, That's not God's design. No, no, no. Everything God created was good. Whatever is not good is not created by God. Whatever was not so from the beginning, we not leave this place with you. So many run away husband, run away wives, run away children. Within seven days, they will return back. Someone will return tomorrow. Whatever is out of line with the covenant is not your portion. It's not your portion. It's not your portion. Yes, Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I decree that this altar of sacrifice will mark the end of your struggles in all areas. Yes, One more time, give Jesus the biggest clap offer. You do lift up your right hand and thank God for light. Thank God for light. Thank God for light. In Jesus precious name we have prayed Amen. gather my sons unto me those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice and the heavens will declare his righteousness for God is judge of all so the covenant pertains to sons until you are born again you are not a candidate for the altar of sacrifice the turnaround is the exclusive preserve of the children of God. So if you are here today or this night around the world and you want to surrender your life to Christ, I'll pray with you so that your sacrifice can secure heaven's righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are here, you want your sins forgiven. You want your name written in the book of life. You want to have eternal life and secure eternity with Christ in heaven. You want to live a most triumphant life on the earth. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. It overcomes by faith. Wherever you are, I'd like to pray with you. Would you please stand to your feet all around the world at this time? Would you stand to your feet? God bless you. God bless you. All of us across the nations of the earth, please stand. Wherever you are, you want me to pray with you to be born again, to be saved, 
to become a child of God, to live the overcomer's life, and to enjoy the wonders from the altar of sacrifice in your journey with God. Please stand. God bless you. Amen. There are also people that need to rededicate their lives to Christ. You want to dedicate your life to Christ tonight? Would you please stand too? Please stand. You want to dedicate your life to Christ? Please stand. You want to dedicate your life to Christ? Please stand. I'd like to pray with you at the same time. God bless you. God bless you. Now, everybody standing, please. Move to the nearest aisle to where you are. Here at the Faith Tabernacle. In all the other locations around the world. Please go towards the altar area. The pastors are waiting to receive you. We'll be praying at the same time. At the same time. At the same time. All those who are standing outside, please make sure you look after them. Make sure you look after them. The outside is jam-packed to the glory of God. Please look after them and be sure we welcome them warmly into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Now, for all of us who are standing for these prayers, would you please bow your heads? Lift up your right hand before the Most High God all around the world today. Please lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you tonight. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood and I proclaim you as my Lord and my Savior. Therefore, I believe I am now saved. I'm now restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Now, keep your hands up as I pray. Father, in Jesus' name, your hand has brought this precious soul to your kingdom. Let the same hand preserve them. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered in the day of his appearing. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Please complete those slips and pass them on to the church officials that are there around with you. We'll be in contact with you for the furtherance of your joy in the journey of the faith. Amen. Church, give the Lord a big hand for saving souls, for restoring souls, celebrating. Shall we all rise? Shiloh 2019 <laughs> and breaking limits.